Over the years, the term video game movie has mostly been met with not so satisfying reactions, considering most of them either butcher the source material, come out cheesy as all hell, or just simply don't live up to the fan expectations in the slightest. However, in 1994, Capcom and the former group TAC Animation Studios in Japan decided to capitalize on the incredibly popular video game for the Super Nintendo and other systems called Street Fighter II. At the time in the mid-90s, Super Nintendo and Sega were pretty much the consoles to get, and Street Fighter II was an essential game that everybody had to have. It's right up there with the original Mortal Kombat as far as legacy fighting games go. There wasn't a kid on the block who didn't have a copy of Street Fighter 2, and for good reason. Choosing from a variety of unique characters, all from different parts of the world, different ethnicities, different fighting styles, different arenas, it hit the variety that so few other games did with its characters and locations, along with the special moves, hadoukening your opponents, or giving them some of that good old yoga fire. Dalsum gets absolutely gypped in this movie, by the way, but I'll get to that. So instead of going the live-action route, they decided to keep the design and aesthetic of the game, along with adding in that classic 90s anime style where every character is jacked and roided out of their goddamn minds, so Street Fighter 2 became a feature-length anime film. So let's talk a little bit about the legacy of the film itself, its confusing title and continuity, and the censored versus uncensored versions. But first, I would like to shout out this sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. And in case you guys have been living underneath a rock for some reason, Skillshare is this awesome online video and service that has a ton of diversity when it comes to the amount of information and skill that it can provide you with. Whether you're more of an artistic person, practical, or anything in between, they will have a video course dedicated to help and guide you on whatever it is that you're interested in beefing your abilities up with. They're taught by people who are actually doing the things you want to know and can provide you with quick, easy, and efficient ways to improve from beginner levels all the way to intermediate and advanced. Just simply search up what you're interested in and choose the best course for you. Most of them are broken down into 10 to 15 minute segments so you don't have to watch it all in one sitting and can make that decision on what works best for your schedule. There's no ads, its interface is super user friendly, and I use it to help me try and get better at editing these YouTube videos for you guys. So I watched through a course on Sony Vegas by the user Storm, totally a beginner guide, but it's exactly what I needed and helped me make videos like this one right now. So if you're curious and you wanna give it a shot, I do have a link down below in the description that will get you one month of Skillshare absolutely free for the first 1,000 people that decide to use it. So go ahead, give it a shot. You got nothing else to lose. And once again, I do wanna truly thank Skillshare for helping to sponsor this video. So this movie is called Street Fighter 2. And in case anyone was confused, there was no Street Fighter 1 movie. Well, at least not in anime form. In the same exact year, a movie called Street Fighter was released in the US starring Jean-Claude Van Damme as Guile. Because, you know, America was making the movie, so they had to make the American character the main character of the film. That's totally cool. I get it. You know, no big deal. At least they didn't try to shove the patriotism down our throats. Oh dear God. It's really not a great movie other than having some nostalgic value for me, and it was one of the first attempts of making a mainstream video game movie. But it wasn't very well received from fans or critics, and they pronounce Ryu's name Ryu, which just makes me cringe every time I hear it. But they did add in a lot of the characters from the game and pretty much at least gave them all a little bit of time to shine. Oh yeah, this movie was also just called Street Fighter though it was definitely made due to the popularity of Street Fighter 2. Then Street Fighter 2, the anime film, just decided to say, screw it, let's just name our movie after what we're basing it on. So Street Fighter, the OG arcade game, was completely disregarded and skipped over because it was not nearly as popular as Street Fighter 2, mostly because Street Fighter predated the home console era, and Street Fighter 2 came out at just the right time and happened to blow up in popularity. So this movie is just called Street Fighter 2. But there was also a 29 episode series called Street Fighter 2V. And if anyone can tell me what the V stood for, please let me know because I can't find a definitive answer anywhere. But when I was a kid, I used to think that the series Street Fighter 2V took place after this movie. 
but I was dead wrong. It's a completely different continuity. Even though it's by the same studio, and they have similar designs, and bears the Street Fighter 2 title, nope, they're different. So upon learning that, that means that this Street Fighter 2 movie is simply a standalone. There's no Street Fighter 1, there's no Street Fighter 3, this is just Street Fighter 2, the movie. So this movie takes the general storyline of the video game's villain, Bison, as the head of a large terrorist organization. In the movie, he's looking for the strongest fighters that he can find in order to manipulate over to his side, sending out cyborgs to observe and transmit these street fights back to him. It largely focuses on the dynamic between Ryu and Ken, two men that grew up training together but have since gone their separate ways. Ken becoming a championship fighter professionally, and Ryu just basically wandering the earth. Walking everywhere, barefoot, because he's just a boss like that, I guess. Look, he even climbs mountains barefoot, that crazy motherfucker. Anyway, it also focuses on Chun-Li and Guile teaming up to try and find and take down Bison's organization. But do you really care about the plot? No, this movie is all about the fights. It's just meant to be fun, and the fights are freaking great. The choreography feels very realistic, but with just enough fantastical elements that it never becomes too DBZ-ish. But still, it lets its characters throw an energy blast every now and again. According to the wiki on the film, the fight scenes were actually choreographed by real-life fighters, and it definitely shows when you watch it. The opening scene during the initial credits is this fight between Ryu and Sagat during a thunderstorm, and the way the fight is intercut with the credits coming in, it's such a nice stylistic choice to open the film, and when that soundtrack hits, dear god. Oh yeah. So if you weren't around during this time of anime in the West in the 90s, early 2000s, it was a very strange time. See, back then a lot of dubbing studios would not just dub the property in English, but they would also completely change the soundtrack. Nowadays, that would seem blasphemous and disrespectful to the anime, but back then, it was just what you did. And a lot of the times, with more action and fighting-based anime, they would splice in rock and metal songs at the time to help ramp up the action. And I'm sorry if this is nostalgia bias, or if this is being disrespectful, but the US soundtrack to this movie fucking slaps, dude. It's awesome. <laughs> they have bands like KMFDM, Korn, and many other emerging rock bands at the time. Keep in mind, Korn put out their first album when this movie came out. So nobody knew Korn was going to be this gigantic metal band that they are now. They were just using this sort of like indie rock new style music. And it works, man. As well as just having general hard rock sounds throughout it. And let me tell you. And that scene where Chun-Li is back flipping around in her nightgown to that KMF DM song, it's just, it's, it's perfection, man. Also, that brings me to another thing. The other problem that we had in the West during these times when this movie came out was the difficulty of seeing anime uncut. Because it would never play on TV uncut, and there wasn't internet services to watch it, so you had to get lucky and find an uncut copy of a VHS, either to rent or to buy, and if you found it to buy, it would probably cost up to 35 bucks or more at the time. So, the original version released of this movie was edited down to a PG-13 rating. Most likely, they thought it would sell better because kids were primarily the ones playing the video game, thus they'd be the ones wanting to see the movie. The uncut version really isn't that much different, although it does add in a few F-bombs, a little bit more gore, and oh yeah, you get to see Chun-Li's tits for like two seconds. And, you know, it's nice, but it's pointless fan service. She's taking a shower, and we get to see him all soapy. We all know it's just there to make the teenage boys happy, along with the following fight scene between Chun-Li and Vega, happening in Chun-Li's apartment, and she's got her nightgown on, flipping around, and we get to see a panty shot every couple of seconds. Sure, it's great to see her stand up and beat the shit out of Vega, but like I said, we all know why this scene is really here. The biggest downside of the movie, in my opinion, is that some characters from the game barely get any screen time. Dalsum, for instance, is only in one scene in a street fight against Honda, and he forfeits. Like, come on, man. We don't even get to see him use that yoga fire. It's super disappointing. Same thing with Blanca and Zangief. They have a fight scene together, but it's super brief, and they have no impact on the story whatsoever. They're just thrown into the movie to show that they're there. 
The final battle of the movie is nearly 20 minutes long, and I gotta say, it really delivers. We get Honda versus Balrog, which is kind of like sumo versus boxing, which is very interesting. We get Guile versus Bison, though it doesn't last nearly as long as the live action version one went. I guess he needed that flag tattoo in order to leave a den on Bison. Ryu versus Ken, which is basically the crux of the movie, and then Ken coming back to his senses for the finale of Ryu and Ken teaming up to verse Bison. And it's all great. Look, this movie isn't about any introspective narratives. It's not supposed to make you think differently about the world. It's just a movie that's meant to be an entertaining action flick based on a video game. And in that aspect, it works. As a kid, seeing something you love being respected and brought to life like this movie did, it was a special thing. The animation looked like it was taken care of and made to look gritty and as exciting as possible. Sure, all the dudes are jacked out of their minds and all the girls are big and busty, but it's fantasy. It's just fun, and in that, it exceeds on all levels. If you've never seen Street Fighter II, the animated movie, do yourself a favor and check it out and pretend you're back in the 90s being validated for enjoying video games for pretty much the first time. If you have seen this movie, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. When did you first see it? How old were you? And did you see the PG-13 or the uncut version? Also, shout out to Skillshare once again for sponsoring this video. I really, really do appreciate it. Please go ahead and check out the link below and get your free trial on as soon as possible. Also, while you're down there in the description, you'll find my Patreon and merch store links if you want to support the channel on that extra level, as well as my various social media links where you can follow me. Other than that, guys, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.